Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Berend. Chapter 5 Expressions from Beginners Hundreds of persons have realized that visualizing is an Aladdin's lamp to him with a mighty will. General Foch says that his feelings were so outraged during the Franco-Prussian War in 1870 that he visualized himself leading a French army against the Germans to victory. He said he made his picture, smoked his pipe, and waited. This is one result of visualizing we are all familiar with. A famous actress wrote a long article in one of the leading Sunday papers last winter describing how she rid herself of excessive body fat and weight by seeing her figure constantly as she wished it to be. A very interesting letter came to me from a doctor's wife while I was lecturing in New York. She began with the hope that I would never discontinue my lectures on visualization, making humanity realize the wonderful fact that they possess the method of liberation within themselves. Relating her own experience, she said that she had been born on the east side of New York in the poorest quarter. From earliest girlhood, she had cherished a dream of marrying a physician some day. This dream gradually formed a stationary mental picture. The first position she obtained was in the capacity of a nursemaid in a physician's family. Leaving this place, she entered the family of another doctor. The wife of her employer died, and in time the doctor married her, the result of her long pictured yearning. After that, both she and her husband conceived the idea of owning a fruit farm in the South. They formed a mental picture of the idea and put their faith in its eventual fulfilment. The letter she sent me came from their fruit farm in the South. It was while at the farm that the doctor's wife wrote me. Her second mental picture had seen the light of materialization. Many letters of a similar nature come to me every day. The following is a case that was printed in the New York Herald last May. Atlantic City, May 5th. She was an old woman, and when she was arraigned before Judge Clarence Goldenberg in the police court today, she was so weak and tired she could hardly stand. The judge asked the court attendant what she was charged with. "'Stealing a bottle of milk, Your Honour,' repeated the officer. She took it from the doorstep of a downtown cottage before daybreak this morning. "'Why did you do that?' Judge Goldenberg asked her. "'I was hungry,' the old woman said. "'I didn't have a cent in the world, and no way to get anything to eat except to steal it.' I did not think anyone would mind if I took a bottle of milk. "'What's your name?' asked the judge. "'Weinberg,' said the old woman. "'Elizabeth Weinberg.' Judge Goldenberg asked her a few questions about herself. Then he said, "'Well, you're not very wealthy now, but you're no longer poor. I've been searching for you for months. I've got five hundred dollars belonging to you from the estate of a relative. I'm the executor of the estate.' Judge Goldenberg paid the woman's fine out of his own pocket, and then escorted her into his office, where he turned the legacy over to her and sent a policeman out to find her a lodging place. I learned later that this little woman had been desiring and mentally picturing five hundred dollars, while all the time ignorant of how it could possibly come to her, but she kept her vision and strengthened it with her faith. In the recent edition of Good Housekeeping, there was an article by Addington Bruce entitled, Stiffening Your Mental Backbone. It is very instructive and would benefit anyone to read it. He says, in part, Form the habit of devoting a few moments every day to thinking about your work in a large, broad, imaginative way, as a vital necessity to yourself and a useful service to society. Huntington, the great railway magnet, before he started building his road from coast to coast, said that he took hundreds of trips all along the line before there was a rail laid. It was said that he would sit for hours with the map of the United States before him and mentally travel from coast to coast, just as we do now, over his fulfilled mental picture. It would be possible to call your attention to hundreds of similar cases. The best method of picturing to yourself that which you may desire is both simple and enjoyable, if you once understand the principle back of it well enough to believe it. First, and above everything else, be sure of what it is you really want then specialise your desire along these lines. End of chapter 5「Your Invisible Power » by Genevieve Berend Chapter 6 – Suggestions for Making Your Mental Picture Perhaps you want to feel that you've lived to some purpose. You want to be content and happy, and feel that with good health and with successful business you could enjoy this state of mind. After you have decided once and for all that this is what you want, you proceed to picture yourself healthy, 
and your business just as great a success as you can naturally conceive it growing into. The best time for making your definite picture is just before breakfast and before retiring at night. As it is necessary to give yourself plenty of time, it may be necessary to rise earlier than is your usual habit. Go into a room where you will not be disturbed. Meditate for a few moments upon the practical working of the law of visualizing and ask yourself, how did the things about me first come into existence? How may I find it helpful to get more quickly in touch with the invisible supply? Someone felt that comfort would be better expressed and experienced by sitting on a chair than on the floor. The very beginning of the meditation, the chair, was the desire to be at ease. With this came the picture of some sort of a chair. The same principle applies to the hat and the clothes that you wear. Go carefully into this thought of the principle back of the thing. Establish it as a personal experience. Make it a fact to your consciousness. If you are thorough in this, you will find yourself in the deep consciousness beneath the surface of your own thought power. Then open a window, take about ten deep breaths, and during the time draw a large imaginary circle of light around you. As you inhale, keeping yourself in the centre of this circle of light, see great rays of light coming from the circle and entering your body at all points, centralising itself at your solar plexus. Hold the breath a few moments at this central light of your body, the solar plexus, then slowly exhale. As you do this, mentally see imaginary rays or sprays of light going up through the body and down and out through the feet. Mentally spray your entire body with this imaginary light. When you have finished the breathing exercise, sit in a comfortable upright chair and mentally know that there is but one life, one substance, and this life substance of the universe is finding pleasure in self-recognition in you. Repeat some affirmation of this kind until you feel the truth and reality of the words that you are affirming. Then begin your picture. Whether your desire is for a state of consciousness or a possession, large or small, begin at the beginning. If you want a house, begin by seeing yourself in the kind of house you desire. Go all through it, taking careful note of the rooms, where the windows are situated, and such other details as help you to feel the reality of your concept. You might change some of the furniture and look into some of the mirrors, just to see how healthy, wealthy and happy you look. Go over your picture again and again until you feel the reality of it. Then write it all down just as you have seen it, with the feeling that the best there is is mine. There is no limit to me, because my mind is a centre of divine operation. And your picture is as certain to come true in your physical world as the sun is to shine. End of chapter 6「Your Invisible Power » by Genevieve Berend Chapter 7 – Things to Remember in Using Your Thought Power for the Production of New Conditions 1. Be sure to know what conditions you wish to produce, then weigh carefully to what further results the accomplishment of your desire will lead. 2. By letting your thought dwell upon a mental picture, you are concentrating the creative spirit to this centre, where all its forces are equally balanced. 3. Visualising brings your objective mind into a state of equilibrium which enables you to consciously direct the flow of spirit to a definitely recognised purpose and to carefully guide your thought from including a flow in the opposite direction. 4. You must always bear in mind that you are dealing with a wonderful potential energy which is not yet differentiated into any particular mould and that, by the action of your mind, you can differentiate it into any specific mould that you will. Your picture assists you to keep your mind fixed on the fact that the inflow of this creative energy is taking place. Also, by your mental picture, you are determining the direction you wish the sensitive creative power to take, and by doing this, the externalization of your picture is a certainty. 5. Remember, when you are visualizing properly, that there is no strenuous effort on your thoughts to hold your thought forms in place. Strenuous effort defeats your purpose and suggests the consciousness of an adverse force to be fought against, and this creates conditions adverse to your picture. 6. By holding your picture in a cheerful frame of mind, you shut out all thoughts that would disperse the spiritual nucleus of your picture. Because the law is creative in its action, your pictured desire is certain of accomplishment. 7. 
The seventh and great thing to remember in visualizing is that you are making a mental picture for the purpose of determining the quality you are giving to the previously undifferentiated substance of energy rather than to arrange the specific circumstances for its manifestation. That is the work of creative power itself. It will build its own forms of expression quite naturally, if you will allow it, and save you a great deal of needless anxiety. What you really want is expansion in a certain direction, whether of health, wealth, or what not, and so long as you get it, as you surely will if you confidently hold to your picture, what does it matter whether it reaches you by some channel which you thought you could count upon, or through some other of whose existence you had no idea? You are concentrating energy of a particular kind for a particular purpose. Bear this in mind, and let specific details take care of themselves, and never mention your intention to anyone. Remember always that nature, from her clearly visible surface to her most arcane depths, is one great storehouse of light and good entirely devoted to your individual use. Your conscious oneness with the great whole is the secret of success, and when once you have fathomed this, you can enjoy your possession of the whole or a part of it at will because by your recognition you have made it and can increasingly make it yours never forget that every physical thing whether for you or against you was a sustained thought before it was a thing thought as thought is neither good nor bad it is creative action and always takes physical form therefore the thoughts you dwell upon become the things you possess or do not possess end of chapter seven